This is Breakthrough Radio. Hey gang, today's topic is about change. It's a quick one. How many life coaches does it take to change a light bulb? Only one, but the light bulb must want to change. I kick off with a little bit of light humor because change can be a difficult topic to embrace. Change is both easy and very difficult. If you think of it, you've actually been changing your entire life, from the day you were born right up until now. Even as you are listening to this, you are changing. As you breathe, you change the air. You extract oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. Your cells are dividing and multiplying and dying. Your thoughts are changing. You do not have the same singular thought for days on end. And most certainly, you do not constantly think, Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. You don't. There is no way that you do this for days on end. And by the same token, you do not repeat the same singular word over and over and over again and again and again, again, again. There's no ways we do this. You know, everything changes. Nothing is stagnant. The world moves. The universe moves. We are not strangers to change. The thing is, these kinds of changes that I'm talking about, or the stuff that I've just been speaking about, it's normal to us. Of course, we don't get stuck in these loops like this. So then, if we've been dealing with change our entire life, is it difficult to change? Everything changes. There was also a time when you couldn't walk, where you relied on someone to change your nappies. A time you couldn't drive a car, cook, make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or any of that. There was a time you went to school and you didn't even know how to read and didn't know how to write and you didn't even know about exams and what those things were. Come to think of it, there was also a time where you couldn't speak and look at you go now. At each turn, all of these things were new to you. All of them. And now? Now they are not. Now we take this as commonplace. We take it as obvious. The reality is if you are a human being, you are a learning and a change machine. If you are not geared to change, then every single little change in your life would actually be excruciating. It would be more than painful. But it's not. Humans were built to change. You were built to change. Of course, there are a few things that do bring discomfort, and some things are harder to adjust to than others. That's for sure. But then again, that's just a degree of adjustment. This does not mean that you cannot embrace change. Let me repeat that. This does not mean that you cannot embrace change. And that begs the question, then why is change so difficult? Why do individuals struggle so much with change? There's actually a few things at play here. One of the things at play is the way we are built. It's the way we are made. The other is how we think. It's our mindset. And of course, inside of that are our emotions and how we deal with these emotions. And of course, the big elephant to this is also resistance. Resistance in this whole game of change is huge. I'm sure we've all heard the statement, being resistant to change. So resistance is a big one for this. And yes, there are other things at play here. But for now, we're going to just stick to the ones we've covered so far and zoom into each of them. The first one is how we grow up. As we grow up, things change. Things change from being easy to change to being hard to change. In itself, this is also a change. As we develop from infants to toddlers, our brain develops and our neural net develops. This neural net is part of the hard wiring. It's the hard wiring of the brain, which consists of things like our eyesight, our hearing, our balance, and a whole host of other permanent and semi-permanent connections within this gray jelly inside of our head, which is our brain. During this period of development, we are feeling out the world and we are constantly adjusting. The brain itself is continuously readapting. As we move from toddler to adolescent or teenager, the brain kicks into a brand new gear. It kicks into the gear of testing and pushing the limits. The forest of connections within our brain are growing like crazy. Each branch of one tree is reaching out to each branch of the other tree. Your brain and the neurons inside of it is constantly checking and constantly testing. And it's attempting to establish what is going to be useful. What can it discard? You know, what is it going to use now? What can it get rid of in later years, in the years to come? Through the teenage years, we see this unfold in front of our eyes. 
This is why teenagers climb high things and jump off them, and they do strange things. And yes, of course, they also tend to know everything. You know, they know everything through this stage. I'm sure you might remember. If you're not currently a teenager now, you'll remember the time when someone told you what to do and how that went down. As a teenager, and this is all about you and adventure and excitement and sleeping, of course, you don't want to hear any of it. The teenage brain is way too consumed with itself. And you carry all of these formative years into your adulthood. In your later years, as you become an adult, your brain actually starts to fell that forest. It starts to cut off all the old branches and clear a lot more space for the most used connections. And then it starts to focus on the most used connections. This is where your brain wants to move into efficiency. At this stage, the idea is that all the testing has been done and all the patterns have been established and now it's time to change into cruising gear, just like a car. When you take off from a standstill, there's a particular gear, you're in first gear. As you go faster, you start switching gears, second, third, fourth, fifth. And as you get into the highway, you put it into its highest gear and it's at this stage where you can hurtle down the highway at full speed and you can just cruise. You don't have to change any gears anymore. This is kind of the place that your brain wants to get to. Your brain wants to go as fast as it can while using the least amount of energy. This in itself is part of the reason why we struggle with change. Because at this stage when we are cruising, we don't want to be changing gears anymore. We want to start cruising. Inside your brain, you have these permanent and semi-permanent paths, which are now set up in your brain. And essentially inside your head, you're cruising. Your thoughts can run without thinking about them. All those other things that you had to learn in the beginning are now automatic. You don't have to think about driving the car anymore. You just drive the car. <laughs> Until you need to take an off-ramp off the highway. Or perhaps the highway in front of you is now under construction. You've got to slip out of cruising gear and start to gear down. And this story or this metaphor, it runs in parallel. You know, the same thing is happening inside your brain that's happening as you drive. When the highway is open, you can just cruise and just go at full speed. But when the highway is under construction or they close the lane, <laughs> suddenly there's a whole lot of congestion in front of us. And it's at this stage where we feel both the same frustration or that we feel the same frustration inside of our heads that we feel as we are driving into traffic. It's the same kind of thing when we start to run into traffic of our thoughts or our thoughts start to build up. You know, they're trying to squeeze through the neurons. They're trying to squeeze through this net. This is too many thoughts going on and we start to experience some sort of congestion in the head. It's the same frustration you feel in traffic while on the actual highway. It's the same as what you feel in your brain. When the traffic of your thoughts build up, and the highways in your brain now become congested. Now, of course, your brain doesn't have physical highways. I mean, honestly, it's more like pipes or tubes or wires or branches. It's more relatable like that. But we get the picture. These pipes, branches, wires or roads inside your brain, however you want to look at it, these things determine how your thoughts run through your brain. And just how roads and highways affect the way you arrive at your destination these pathways affect the way that you think. These pathways affect the way that your thoughts arrive at their destination. So quite literally, the way your brain is wired, just how roads and highways affect the way that you arrive at your destination, these pathways in your brain affect the way you think. They affect the way your thoughts arrive at their destination. There's a lady named Carol Dweck. Carol Dweck wrote the book Mindset. And this is a book which distinguishes between two particular mindsets, between two different ways of thinking. She describes it like this. One way is a rigid or a stuck way of thinking, a fixed mindset. And the other way is a very flexible or open way of thinking. She calls this a growth mindset. And there's neither a right or a wrong way. There's not a right mindset. There's no such thing. The thing is they simply produce results. Each particular mindset goes about its own way to produce a particular result. And for each individual with these mindsets, these mindsets also produce a very particular state of being. In other words, how they feel inside. The one with the fixed mindset. They're interesting. <laughs> sure, they're so interesting. The fixed mindset believes that everything that they achieve is because of their inner talents. It's something that is already inside of them. It's something that they were born with. And the flexible mindset, or the growth mindset, they believe that their achievements are from hard work. It's through their effort. And they can work at things. Like things can be achieved. Things can be achieved through effort and hard work. It's their efforts that produce the result. It's not only limited to their inborn talents. 
there are countless examples of both mindsets achieving greatness. Both mindsets achieve great things. And it's not to put one against the other. It's not to make the one better or the other worse. It's not about that. This is an opportunity to examine what happens when each mindset encounters a change, a sudden change. When there is a sudden change, a surprise event or something completely out of the blue occurs, what happens when each mindset encounters these things? And which mindset tends to prevail out of these? Which one tends to get through them with the least amount of struggle? Let's look at the fixed mindset first. The fixed mindset is set on the idea that who they are is kind of frozen in time. It's set in stone, and they believe that they'll never change. Within this mindset, they tend to suffer the end of history delusion. In other words, they struggle to think of how different they're going to be in the future. They struggle to be flexible. They battle to put down their points of view. They battle to see themselves different, even in the face of the evidence of their life. Their life has changed. They've seen it before. They know that they've changed from the way they were before. And, of course, they're not ignorant. They know that they will change in the future. The thing is, the mindset is just very stuck in the moment. If you have this kind of mindset, for the fixed mindset, just think of your past. Think of your past self and think of the times when things went well. And now, imagine that in your future. Imagine yourself different in your future. Let go of this idea that you're stuck, that you're frozen in time. So let's take a look at the flexible mindset. The flexible mindset is a growth mindset. As Carol puts it, this is the mindset that deals with change in a far more graceful manner. The flexible mindset or the growth mindset, they tend to take change in their stride and the fixed mindset struggles with the situation. The flexible mindset makes a plan and makes adjustments along the way. The flexible mindset rather chases the result over trying to prove the correctness of their plan. With a fixed mindset, tends to make plans and then spends a lot. They tend to spend all their energy making sure that everything goes according to that plan. They put a lot of energy into that. And this is also why when the plan fails, or the things that they thought was going to happen didn't happen, the fixed mindset tends to blame the execution of the plan and struggles to look at the flaws inside the plan, or perhaps the flaws within themselves. Now let me be clear, both mindset have flaws. I'm not making the one worse than the other. It's just how we deal with change, how we deal with something which is a surprise. And this mindset rabbit hole which we've just gone down, I mean, this is huge. It almost encompasses it all. Mindset is a very big deal. However, it can't just be boiled down to two simple mindsets. But we digress. We need to break down why change is hard. We need to break this down even further. Because our biology also has a part in this. The things like how we are wired. It's how our environment supported us to grow into what we have become. Dealing with change is also related to our very early experiences. Our biology reacts to our early experiences. And together with our mindset or our attitude, our attitude towards these experiences, these determine how our brain wires itself. And there are so many determining factors here. As all of this is going on, we are experiencing feelings and we are having emotions. And if we do not learn about our emotions and how to manage them when we are young, As we get older, we will struggle with these emotions. We will struggle with these feelings. We will struggle with all these things and even more. And this is where it gets super interesting for me. Because the beauty and the gold in all of this is that if you're a human, if you're a human being, you are a learning and a change machine. You can literally affect and change all of these things. You've been capable of change from the beginning. You can change, you can adapt, and you can learn. And as you learn, your attitudes or your perceptions about things they will change. And as those things change, your brain will change with it. Your brain and your thoughts can be remapped. Besides your neural net, you can literally rewire yourself. Your brain is constantly under construction and it will make new pathways for you as long as you insist on them. If you insist on new pathways, your brain will make new pathways for you. The thing is, you must insist on it. In other words, you can't just do it once and think it's going to happen. Your brain doesn't work like that either. The process of change is a two-way street. It is a bi-directional feedback mechanism. In other words, the way you think affects how you're wired, and how you're wired affects how you think. And if your brain is under constant construction, this means that we can affect these things. Now, it's much harder to change your behavior to change your thinking than it is to change your thinking to change your behavior. I'll run that past you again. It is much harder to change your behavior to change your thinking 
than it is to change your thinking to change your behavior. It's much easier to change your thinking than to change your behavior. And they work together. They work together. The spoiler alert for this is we need to do both. And it is much easier to change the way you think. This is why it is easier and way more efficient and effective to change and work on your thoughts, to work on your mindset first, than it is to just expect to change the way you do things. Without being able to think about your thinking, your habits will kick in and will override any random ideas from yesterday. Remember, your brain wants to be efficient. It wants to kick into high gear and stay there. It does not want to waste energy. Thinking about your thinking takes energy. Thinking about changing gears or thinking about things in the future, it takes energy. Thinking and constantly monitoring your inner thoughts, your inner voices, your behaviors, all of this stuff takes energy. And essentially, when you start monitoring these things, in the beginning, this is exhausting. This is why habits are so important. Habits make everything way easier. They, make things, they actually make it super easy. I mean, you know, we formed the habit of how to drive a car. Imagine having to learn how to drive your car from scratch every single morning. Sure, it'll be a nightmare. Oh, I wouldn't want to go to sleep for the fear of forgetting everything that I'd learned how to do that day. Yeah, this is not feasible. We need our unconscious thoughts and we need our habits. We need that habitual behavior. We do. I don't know who said this. First we create our habits, and then our habits create us. The whole trap here is if you're not geared for change, if you're not geared to change your thinking or your behavior, then change is going to be excruciating for you. Change is going to be almost an impossible proposition for you. Point of fact, if you're not geared for change, anything outside of your comfort zone is going to be super uncomfortable. I want you to keep that in mind because, you know, sometimes people say that I can't relate to other people. I'm already relating to the potential difficulty of this. I mean, personally, I know this one well. Sometimes for me, change is, change is like being tortured by a professional terrorist interrogator. You know, someone attempting to extract the secret or the perfect baked muffin recipe from me. And you can imagine that this would obviously be excruciating for me because I don't know the secret recipe for the perfectly baked muffin. So how would I be able to stop the torture? It's impossible. It makes it even more painful and unbearable. Because how am I supposed to do something or say something that I just don't know? And this is where the magic happens. Because change has got nothing to do with knowing or not. Change has got more to do with being willing to do something new or different. Anything new or different. It's got to do with the willingness. It's got nothing to do with whether you know about it or not. And when it comes to change, the trick in all of this is to expect the pain. Because change is uncomfortable. Change can be difficult. Change can be painful. The trick with this change deal is to expect the pain. When we expect the pain, the pain itself tends to be less, or it's perceived as less. Even if the pain is of a higher intensity, the pain lasts for a much shorter span of time. There have been studies on this. When we expect discomfort, the discomfort is often experienced as much more intense, but then it subsides significantly quicker, and this is way more bearable. It's when we deny the pain of change. It's when we do not like the alternative of change. It's when we do not anticipate the pain. It's when we resist the pain. It's when we do not like the alternative of change. It's when we deny the pain of change when change itself becomes even more painful. Once we can accept that change is inevitable and that it is uncomfortable, this is when we can get comfortable in our discomfort. I know, this might sound like crazy talk, or it might sound strange. It is. It's very strange. But it's not crazy. Because think about it. Why would any human knowingly want to put themselves through pain? We don't. It's because we are looking for answers. We are striving. We were all promised a bigger and better life. And we all want bigger and better things. And if we want bigger and better things, we need to go to bigger and better heights. We need to go to a different place which implies we need to change. The success is not guaranteed, but the struggle is. That bigger and better life does not come without change. <sighs> I know we are all looking for answers. 
But until we do something about it, until we take action on the alternatives, those wants and those desires will simply remain as fantasies. I know this one well. I know it myself. We look for videos to solve a problem, books to read for the answers. But until we act on these things, until we act on these things, these images, these words, until we act on them, there will be no change. And I know this one well. I know this because I do it. I do this. I watch videos and read books constantly. All the videos and books promise a solution. They do. They tell us a lot of things. They tell us about what the problem is and, and sometimes even how to solve it. However, without doing something and doing something different, there will be no change. If you do the same thing again and again, you will get what you already have because you've already done it before. And if you've done it before, you already have what that doing has brought you. So you already got it. So why do the same thing again? One more video is not going to solve your problem. One more book is not going to solve your problem. Talking to someone about it is not going to solve your problem. It's what you act upon. That's what will bring you the results. That will bring you the change that you desire. Now, of course, <laughs> let's not be ridiculous. I'm not suggesting that you need to stop reading or watching or listening to any good content. In fact, I insist on it. I insist that you keep it up. I insist that you keep at it, hard at it. You keep working at it. Watch the videos, read the books, listen to the audios, whatever it takes. Go through thousands of hours of podcasts. <laughs> Re-listen to this if you have to. It's the same thing. The time will come when all of that stuff will need to be acted upon. And all the information and all the talking will need to be put into action and be demonstrated. For me, the question and the answer is simple. What is the alternative? Talking, thinking, watching, reading, or actually doing? When two roads lay in front of you, which one do you take? Do you take the well-worn familiar road? The one that you know where it takes you to? The one where you are familiar with the destination? This tends to be the destination that you're already at. Or would you take the other one? Do we take the unfamiliar road? As M. Scott Peck wrote, the road less traveled. Sometimes the unfamiliar road is just the road you haven't been down in a long while. You've actually been on it before. It's actually familiar. It's the road that you used all the time, but you used it long ago. And one day you simply took a detour. You took a shortcut. And you turned that shortcut into the path you now use all the time. Sometimes the road less traveled is actually a familiar road to you. You've simply stopped using it and it's become overgrown. So what makes going up that road again so difficult? Is it the perception of change? Is it the perception that it's harder? It's harder to go up that road again? Or is it just the fear of doing something new? We'll jump into fear in a moment. It's not about having big goals and not knowing how to get there. It's about having a clear path to lesser goals that keeps us from having what we truly want. It's all about the mindset, the drive, and the degree of responsibility that we take when we get to this point. I'll talk about responsibility in other podcasts. For now, let's just jump into the fear. Is it just the fear of doing something new which is holding you back? If this is where emotions kick in, this is where the habits kick in, this is where the resistance kicks in, this is where the fear kicks in. The emotion of fear is a powerful emotion. Fear is actually the emotion that has kept us alive and has created humans as an apex predator on this planet. It's because of our fear that we built fences around our villages, kept the fires burning all the way through the night, and sharpened sticks to protect ourselves and use them to go hunting. This is what fear brought us. Fear is wonderful if you have the mindset for it. If you can embrace your fear, enjoy your fear, move towards your fear, you will sail through the hard times, I promise. If you cannot, fear will be paralyzing for you. Fear will keep you trapped, and fear will keep you away from the very thing that you desire. Fear is both a blessing and a curse. Fear is a blessing because it alerts us to danger. It keeps us on our toes. It's also a curse. Because it floods our body with chemicals. It makes us do weird things. It paralyzes us. And it also gets us to react. Sometimes we run away, and other times we stand and fight. Fear is quite remarkable. And all of these things, I mean all of these, these mindsets and everything we've been talking about, all of these things kick into play 
when it's time for us to change. Keep in mind, it's not the obstacle in front of us keeping us from our dreams that is the problem. It's the clear path away from our dreams. That's the problem. I'll say it again. It's not the obstacle in front of us keeping us from our dreams that's the problem. It's the clear path away from our dreams. That's the problem. In the United States military, they say that you do not rise to the occasion, you fall to the level of your training. Doing the work up front might seem pointless. You know, it might seem like a waste of time. Until you need it. When you do the work up front, the work itself becomes the shortcut. My question to you is, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Do you sit in your puddle and cry? Or do you pick a path and do something? It's not about the pursuit of an opportunity. It's about pursuing the mistaken opportunity. What's the alternative? Do you stay where you are and keep what you already have? Or do you take a leap and reach for the stars? You might reach for the stars and miss. That's okay. That's okay. At least you reached for something. Or you can go the other way. You can reach for the mud and you can grab it every time. And I've heard all the reasoning. I've heard all the excuses. You know, Andrew, you know, if I, at, at least if I reach for the mud, you know, at least I can grab it. At least I can say I succeeded. You know, sure, <laughs> you could say that. However, I know that deep inside of you, you do not just want a handful of mud. You want the stars. Yes, but you know, reaching for the stars is so much, or reaching for bigger things is so hard, and it's actually not. You know, you were thinking anyway, you may as well think big. I would much rather live in the space of reaching for stardust than reaching for mud. Even if I don't get my stardust, my hands will be open. At least my hands will be open to receive something completely unexpected. What's the alternative? What is the alternative? Change is inevitable. Rather be prepared for it. Change is uncomfortable. Expect it. Change is fantastic. Look forward to it. Look at what change has already brought you. It has brought you what you have, and it has brought you what you didn't expect. Let's do something quick. Close your eyes. Unless you're driving. Okay, if you're, if you're driving, do not close your eyes, please. Keep your eyes on the road and keep your eyes on the fools who drive on it, please. But if you're not driving or doing something that requires the attention of your eyes, close your eyes. Close your eyes and picture two paths in front of you. One path is familiar and it leads down a hill. The other path leads up the hill. Which one do you take? The choice is yours. Remember, it's your choice. Which one do you take? No matter what choice you make, make one. If your eyes are closed, open them. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. One thing with the choices that we make is that we need to live with them. If we make the choice, there is no good reason to whine about the choice. No matter what the choice was, no matter what choice we make, even if we choose to stand still, standing still is still a choice. No matter which choice you make, make one. Make a choice and live with it. Choice comes the moment before action. In other words, we make a choice and then we act on that choice. Sometimes we make a choice and we do nothing. We make a choice to, let's say, go out and eat ice cream, but then we don't. You see, there's a difference between making a choice and then acting on it. It is our choices which determine our actions, and our actions determine our results. Now that little statement kicks me right in the solar plexus every morning. Personally, I am much more than a thinker than a doer, and I'd much rather spend my entire day just thinking about things. However, my universe supports action, not thought. So when I wake up, I grind my gears into action, making mistakes all along the way. When it comes to your thoughts and your actions, with constant, persistent, and consistent attention, your thoughts will change. Your brain will change. Your brain will go into construction and will open new pathways for you. It will make new connections. It will make new connections and provide you with all the opportunity to release the congestion of the traffic that's in your head. And it will create more highways so that you can get back into your flow again. 
And with that constant, persistent and consistent attention to your thoughts, that will change your actions. And as we change our actions, it will change our thoughts. As we change our thoughts, they will change our actions. With a little bit of practice, that tiny little process, which might seem so difficult or so hard, will become so easy and become so natural and maybe make change not that difficult. The thing is, if we choose the easy path which takes us down the hill, we will find friends there. We will. And one day we'll all sit around the fire sharing thoughts and telling stories about those who took the more difficult path up the hill. And we'll share made-up stories about their fantastic lives. Some might even say that those who took the difficult path up the hill were just lucky. Look at how lucky they are to have such a great view. Look at how lucky they are to be on top of the mountain. Look at how lucky they are to have what we desire. They are so lucky. And some might even say that they're glad that they're not on top of the mountain. I mean, have you heard? And they will have their own story. Their own story of why they are glad that they are not on top of the mountain. Because have you seen? Have you seen the storms up there? Have you heard? Have you heard how hard the winds blow up there? Have you heard how harsh the sunshine is up there? I mean, have you heard all these stories? Have you heard what it's like to be up there? Well, not to worry. We've all heard the stories. And we all have our stories. They say that the tallest puppy gets cut. The tallest tree catches the most wind. And so on. Well, the ones that stand out, they also catch the most sunshine. And they tend to have the better view. All these stories and metaphors have meaning. And they have their own truths to them. They're also just metaphors. And they're also just stories. There's actually not much to them until you do something with them. Change is difficult. Change is hard. Especially when you feel like you need to go against your nature. Change is difficult. Change is hard. Especially when you resist it. Change is difficult. And change is hard. Especially when you feel that you have to give up the path which takes you down to the village. The irony is you do not have to give up any of this. You do not have to give this up for change. You can have both. You can. You can have both the castle on the mountain and the village in the valley. You can. If this is what you want, you can make it happen. You can. Change can also be easy and exhilarating. And it can also be a lot of fun. It can be. It can. It all depends how you look at it. What's the alternative? What is the alternative? Thank you for listening. This has been a Breakthrough Audio production with me, your host, Andrew. Thank you for your time.